America, we've been had, we've been took, we've been lied to, we've been hoodwinked, we've been bamboozled, we've been led astray. The spin which got on national TV, basically, and lied to our faces. Just as today, Sean Spencer had his daily press conference and lied to the press corps' faces. I want to play the interview that was done by Matt Lauer. And basically, uh, we're told that s smoke is being blown up our asses and it's sunshine. Check this out. Trump's counselor, Kellyanne, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. Yesterday afternoon on MSNBC, you said that Michael Flynn enjoyed the full confidence of the president. Sean Spicer later said the president was evaluating the situation, and then Michael Flynn resigns overnight. Were you out of the loop on this? No, not at all. Both were true. The president is very loyal. He's a very loyal person, and uh, by night's end, Mike was best to resign. He knew he'd become a lightning rod, and, uh, and he made that decision. So had he not resigned, the president would continue with him as national security advisor, even though he misled the vice president and the administration about the well, contents of that call? That fact is what became unsustainable, actually. I, I think misleading the vice president really was uh, the key here. And I spoke with the president this morning. He asked me uh, to to speak on his behalf and, and to reiterate that uh, Mike Flynn had resigned. He decided that he that the situation had become unsustainable for him. But wait here. a second. And of course, the president accepted that resignation. You're saying that was the straw that broke the camel's back, but the White House knew about that last month when the Justice Department warned the White House that Mr. Flynn or General Flynn had not been completely honest in characterizing that conversation with the Russian ambassador. And he, they even went further to say that as a result of that dishonesty, he was at risk for blackmailing by the Russians. Well, that's, that's one characterization. But the fact is that General Flynn continued in that position and was in the presidential daily briefings as part of the leader calls as recently as yesterday, was there for the Prime Minister's visit from Canada yesterday. And uh, as time wore on, obviously the situation had become unsustainable. Kelly, and that, that, Gen General Flynn... That makes no sense. Last month, the Justice okay. Department warned the White House that General Flynn had misled them, and that as a result, he was vulnerable to blackmail. And, and, and at that moment, he still had the complete trust of the President? Matt, I'm telling you what the president has said, which is that uh, he's accepted General Flynn's resignation and he wishes him well and that we're moving on. There are at least three candidates, very strong candidates, that will be considered for a permanent position here. Obviously, General Keith Kellogg is the acting national security advisor starting today, and the president is moving forward. I, I want to go back to that ambassador back in December. You're starting to make me think that perhaps General Kelly was not freelancing during that call when he talked about or hinted, I'm sorry, uh, General, General Flynn, Flynn. That, that he wasn't freelancing during that call, that in fact he may have been making that call on behalf of the administration or the incoming administration. Would that be accurate? No, that's, it would be a mistake to conclude that. Remember, in the end, it was misleading the vice president that made the situation unsustainable. Which the White House knew about last month. And yet yesterday you went on the air and said that General Flynn had the complete and full confidence of the president. And General Flynn decided that he should resign last night and the president accepted that resignation. And the president is very loyal and he's been carrying forward with his entire team uh, very effectively, frankly. And at this stage, he accepted the resignation and he's moving on. But loyalty uh, is one is thing. Keeping a guy in a position of national security advisor who has communicated with the Russians and then misled the administration about the contents of that communication is entirely a different thing. Wouldn't you agree with that? Well, Matt, what I would tell you is uh, the president and I had a conversation where he referred to the comments made by Charles Krodheimer on a different network last night that it is not one communication or one incident necessarily. In this case, it is the misleading
speaking to the vice president and also the inability to remember um, as General Flynn started to clarify his remarks and say, it may, it may, I can't remember, I can't recall. I think that was his clarification over the weekend. I can't recall whether or not the information that was provided to the vice president that others in the administration had repeated as well, whether or not that in fact was the whole truth. Was General Flynn the right pick in the beginning? Well, the, the president chose him and, that's, and he you know, was very loyal and he had a 30 plus year career in the military. Um, I've talked to General Flynn on a number of occasions about that career. But isn't it, isn't it kind of surprising that with that 30 year plus career in the military, a guy who was about in December to be named National Security Advisor would not understand or realize that phone calls with a Russian ambassador are routinely wiretapped by U.S. intelligence officials and that anything he said on that call might come back to haunt him? Well, you're presuming what General Flynn did or did not know. But the key here, and I want to repeat it, the key here is the misleading of the Vice President and others. Uh, the incomplete information or the inability to completely recall what did or did not happen as reflected in his debriefing of, of particular phone calls. That really was, that really was uh, what happened here. Uh, Killian. All right. This is flipping bullshit, okay? She just sat up there and tried to bullshit the American people uh, regarding this issue. And I'm here to tell you that um, as far as I'm concerned, it ain't going to fly. Now, this woman has the nerve to think that uh, the American people are basically stupid. All right, let me, let me not give you the complete timeline, but I'm just going to give you a partial. Uh, number one. I, in my heart, do not believe that Flynn operated uh, in a vacuum, that he went rogue on the president-elect uh, Donald Trump, okay? I absolutely do not believe that. But the conversation that Flynn had with the Russian ambassador took place on December the 29th, which is the same day that President Obama issued the sanctions. Now. We probably are never going to be able to see the full transcript of that conversation, but you damn sure know that the FBI has it because it's just a matter of a course that all foreign dignitaries, friend and foe, are basically bugged when they come into this country, just like all of our uh, ambassadors and dignitaries are bugged when they go into the other any other country. That's just, you know, the cost of doing business. Everybody does it. Everybody knows that everybody does it. That ain't any big deal. But for this dumbass uh, not to realize that uh, his conversation was being recorded, you know, begs uh, to the intelligence of this guy, particularly given the fact that this guy is an intelligence wonk. You know, that's his claim to fame. Okay, that being said, and again, I'm going to repeat, I think Donald Trump basically had directed this guy, and I say that because I think Donald Trump has been in the pockets of the, uh, Putin and the Russians for a long period of time. So if my, that premise is true, then for Trump to uh, advise Flynn to go in there and uh, make nice with the Russians and tell them the stuff that uh, they want to hear, that really doesn't uh, stretch the imagination all that much. But what really blew everything up was the Russian response to Obama kicking out uh, their 35 spy diplomats, whatever you want to call them. The Russians always, always have reacted to uh, any type of action uh, that we've taken regarding uh, removal of their diplomats by doing the same exact thing. So a big red flag went up when they didn't kick out you know, a similar number of our diplomats from Russia. And what made it worse was the fact that Donald Trump complimented them for not uh, taking that action. As soon as that went down, I immediately thought that, that there's got to be some kind of a deal in the works here. And obviously there was between Trump 
uh, his lackey, for use of a one of a better word, and uh, the Russian ambassador and Putin. Now this, as far as the Russians were concerned, was great when Vice President Pence and uh, Sean Spicer went on uh, TV and uh, stated that uh, there had been no conversations whatsoever about uh, removal of, actually sanctions period, or removal of sanctions, because at that point, the Russians knew it was a lie. And they were pretty much thinking that this is something that they could use. So obviously, they were going to keep their mouth shut until such time as the release of that information would benefit them. Now, it was between the 29th and approximately the 12th or the 13th that Obama's people uh, in uh, national intelligence, uh, the attorney general, FBI, etc., conferenced amongst themselves about going to Trump. Now, FBI Director Comey, this motherfucker should be fired. I am just telling you, this guy, I don't know what his agenda is, but let me just say that of the uh, three people uh, that wanted to go directly to Trump a week before the inauguration and let him know what was going on, the one that put the kibosh on going to Trump at that point was FBI Director Comey, citing it would uh, affect uh, an investigation uh, that uh, was undergoing or ongoing. That's fucking bullshit. The FBI works for the Justice Department, and the Justice Department obviously works uh, for us at the people, but they report to the president. Obama knew, you know damn well he knew. The thing was that Trump didn't know before he puts this compromised asset into position. It was only after Pence went out there defending this guy that the decision was made by the Attorney General and she went directly to the White House Council and let them know what was going on and that the potential existed for Flynn to be blackmailed because he lied obviously to Pence and some others from what I understand and Pence went out there and lied to the American people. Now, Trump again, was supposedly told on January the 20th. Today is uh, February the 14th. And I, I guess I should reference back to yesterday, February the 13th. What the fuck was Trump doing between January the 20th and February the 13th? I'll tell you what he was doing. He was hoping that this shit was going to blow over because he knew that Flynn had lied, but apparently lying is no problem as far as Donald Trump is concerned. And then they got this gift from Charles Krauthammer who stated that it was no big deal Flynn having a conversation regarding sanctions with the Russians. Well, the last time I looked, that was a violation of the Logan Act. Now, whether the Justice Department was going to go forward with action against Flynn uh, by using the Logan Act, that's neither here nor there. It was a violation of the Logan Act. And thank God for the press, because if a story about Flynn lying and there being information out there hadn't run on a Friday, which definitively stated that there were transcripts of him lying, 
the American people would not have known a damn thing. And the piece de resistance was the fact that the Washington Post came out at approximately uh, 9 o'clock, make it 10 o'clock uh, Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, uh, with the story that they were releasing that the president knew all about it. It was at that point, approximately an hour later, that uh, Mr. Flynn either was fired, which the White House is not saying he was fired, or um, he decided on his own to offer his resignation. Well, um, that's also not quite what the White House is saying. What they're saying is President Trump, between December, I'm sorry, January 20th and uh, February 13th at 8 o'clock in the evening, according to what Kelly Conway just said, had supreme confidence in Mr. Flynn. But over an hour or two hour period, something must have occurred that caused the president to lose confidence. And she's probably right. The thing that occurred was the people were informed that Donald Trump knew all about this stuff and had known about it for a month. Folks, this administration is a disaster just waiting to happen. So I again repeat, people, we've been had. We've been took. We've been hoodwinked. We've been lied to. We've been led astray. We've been bamboozled. And it's up to us to open our eyes and recognize that and do whatever we need to do in order to get this shit straight. Now, please don't defend, depend on our elected leaders. Mitch McConnell has got his goddamn head in the sand and kind of peeked out and said, well, uh, 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 we, we can handle uh, uh, an investigation. Uh, um, the uh, Senate Intelligence uh, 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 Committee, uh, they can handle an investigation. Uh, Paul Ryan's talking about uh, there's nothing to see here. So we basically have two-thirds of our government in a position of compromise. Obviously, the executive branch is compromised by all of this, and we have an ineffective or cover thy Republicans' ass uh, legislative body, i.e. Congress. So it is up to the fourth estate, the media, to try to uncover this stuff. Now, are they 100%? No, they are not but they do enough good work for other people to uh, dig down into this stuff so that we can at least try to get at the truth. Now, I'm going to repeat what I said before. Donald Trump is Putin's bitch, and he's in Putin's pocket. There's nothing that anybody can tell me that's going to change my mind. Putin had a direct effect on our elections. There's no, even the Republicans are not uh, disputing that. What they're saying is that Putin's interference in our election system did not have a direct effect on the outcome of the election. Now that may or may not be true, but it damn sure had a contribution to uh, what happened. Now, hey, I'm all, you know Trump's in. The only way out for Trump is to get impeached, which I believe ultimately he will be. But the election had Trump, which was a fucking disaster, uh, waiting to happen versus Clinton, who was an actual disaster that was happening, that had already happened and was continuing to happen. It had FBI Director Comey, who threw his two cents in, in direct violation of FBI rules and policies. 
It had the Russians uh, and selectively releasing information, which had an adverse effect on the people's opinion, let's call it, of uh, Clinton. And then you got voter suppression laws all over the place that directly suppressed the vote. So, in my opinion, it was a combination of things that led to the perfect storm that created the Donald Trump presidency. And there's not a damn thing we can do about what has already happened. We need to do something in order to make changes in the things that could potentially happen. Independent uh, committee to investigate uh, Mr. Flynn, everything that he did, and up and including uh, to Mr. Trump to see what he did as far as working in conjunction with the Russians in order to get elected. The Republicans, obviously, uh, they're all hunky-dory um, as far as uh, anything the Russians uh, would have done in order to help Trump. They just wanted to get a guy in the White House so that they could basically remove uh, the one roadblock that they had in order to get their way. So, and then you had the Democrats who basically sat on their goddamn hands and ignored the majority of the people. So, again, in my opinion, perfect storm.